Welcome and well met to Words of Assam, the monthly, well, most of the time, Final Fantasy XIV fan podcast. We're a group of warriors of light from Lamia World and Primal Data Center here to shut the hour away. I'm Yosora Polianas, veteran black mage, and with me I have our ever fierce warrior, Kalira Talian. Hello. And the High Soaring Dragoons, Asaria Limili. Hello. And Midori Toka. Hello. Okay, so, uh, two months since last episode, some stuff has come out since then, there was the, um, uh, live letter that we'll be talking about, and there was also a, um, patch 2.6.28. Uh, 8, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's just, oh, and the, and the Halloween event also happened, so yes. let's just jump yes. right into everything and see, um... Well, let's start with the Halloween event, then. Did all of you play it? I did. Um, they've actually, like, kind of concluded the whole storyline they've been working on for forever with those things. Yeah, the Continental Circus storyline kind of finally yeah. hit its end. We, yeah, we found out, found out who the little lady in the pumpkin head was, which was, while I was doing the quest, I was like, man, I wonder if they're ever going to te- do anything with that lady in the pumpkin head and actually tell us who she is, and then they did. <laughs> so it's like... Uh. Ah, oh, damn. I uh, actually haven't logged in since the uh, we did the Variant Dungeon, so I missed that entirely. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, on like Halloween night, I was like, oh, I think there's probably a Halloween event. I should do that. And then I uh, kind of forgot forgot about it for a few more days and went, oh, okay, well. Yeah, I did it like the day before it ended. Yeah. So from what I could gather, she's like, she's like, not she's not Void Scent. She's from the source. But she's like can control void scent somehow. Yeah. And it was, and basically she's just there to keep the continental circus from misbehaving too much. <laughs> so, uh, I wonder if they're trying to wrap that up so they can um, not have void stuff ongoing in the future. Maybe it might also just be that they want to start like all new stuff for the all new yeah. era of fourteen as well. Yeah. So, uh, it was okay. Um, the glamour is pretty nice if you're into uh, plague doctors. Oh yeah, it was like a um, kind of plague doctor esque. Mask. Plague doctory gas mask. Yeah. Um, uh, it probably would be good for a. Um, you could you could probably do like a, a, an Ark Knights cosplay with it. Um. Yeah. And. Uh... So, yeah. Yeah, and you got to transform into uh, Mama, whatever <laughs> her name is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you could um, go to a couple different places and transform into various NPCs. They put in a new instance. It was a outside of a haunted house kind yeah. of thing, which was neat. And then they had the inside of the Hockey Manor instance they've been using. Um, and you could transform as other characters and mess around if you wanted. They had a whole wide selection of NPCs. Yeah, you had the usual ones with the Scions and um well oh, put new ones were added. Yeah. Well. Uh, so um, then there's 6.28 which added the variant dungeons. Yeah, um, so we did one run of that. I need to go in and run more sometime. Um, there's apparently ten different routes. Yeah. And, um, but we did one together. Um, so it was pretty neat. It was surprisingly, like, like, the bosses were surprisingly, um, tough. Like, yeah. We died a few times on. Well, I don't remember the names of the bosses that we actually fought now, but. Um, like the final boss of our run through it got us several times. So. Yeah. I think we died once on the second boss, or was it was there two bosses or three bosses? I think it was There's three, two right? bosses. Two? Okay, a, so I, think I think there's. A... There are three bosses total, but you only encounter two of them each run, I think. Okay. So um so yeah I think it was once on the on the first boss and then I think it was twice on the second boss. Yeah. yeah. They're set up 
to be uh, tough in that while you don't instantly die, they have been designed to the fact that everybody has a heal and a res if they yeah. want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, once you yeah, know the mechanics, you it's, it becomes like a purely an execution issue, but um, they're definitely spicy enough that it's that it's difficult uh, going in yeah, blind. I mean yeah, I imagine the lack of instant death is there to give you a, to have a little bit of leeway for people who want to solo. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, and the, the uh, mechanic and the uh, proximity mechanic in the uh, second boss is pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I had to, I had to remember that. Um, but yeah, so apparently there's like a whole like puzzle solving aspect to get all the all ten endings and. Um, those journal entries you unlock have clues and stuff for it if you want to do it yourself. So, because hmm. uh, like go, the the like the initial choice, uh, left, right, or center, and then um, there's a couple other cho like obvious choices, but then there's other like secret things like doing certain emotes at certain locations will change how things go. Oh, so. oh, interesting. Yeah, we should do so, more of that. The, uh... Yeah, and all and there, the clues are in the um. The journal entries you unlock each time yeah, you finish yeah. it with new and you get a journal entry. And if you read those closely, apparently it'll sort out the uh, what you need to do. Um, I don't think any of us have done Criterion at all, of course. No. 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 Um, it seems to have been fairly well received. People are, are fairly happy with the um, difficulty level. Um, the. Uh, uh what do any of you know about about how it compares to regular in terms of like what it does? I thought I saw a comment somewhere that it's just the same without AOE markers, but it's, it's, I'm skeptical. Well, um, so Criterion true. is always the same every time. It doesn't have different roots like Variant does. Um, and then the Criterion Savage has um, uh, fewer AOE markers. I don't think it has none, but it has fewer. And then um, it has a strict 24-minute time limit and oh, okay. no res. For the savage, the regular criterion I don't think has the strict time limit, and you can res not in combat. I think. Yeah, something like that. And then the savage, you can't res at all, and you got to clear it in like 24 minutes. Hmm. So it becomes basically just a, a big optimization exercise on the, cr the trash pulls and the bosses and everything. Interesting. Um, we'll there was also the, uh, um, also in, there was the, uh, Gathering Beast Tribe, the Omicrons. Oh, yeah. Um, I started, I haven't done very much because I haven't been able to log in recently, but, um, I mean, it's the Omicrons, but it's also, like, everybody else in Ultima Thule, plus some Loperates, and, um, so, it's been it's... pretty fun so far. It's very much wrapping up all of the plot lines from... Uh, Ultima Thule and uh, the um, storyline final instance before you fight the final boss of Endwalker. Yeah, it's it's using um, the civilizations from the Dead Ends. Yeah, as part of it. It also has one of the better uh, here tribal quest uh, mounts uh, with the flying jellyfish where <laughs> it it's like the level checker where you're inside it. Yeah. So yeah, that's um that's most of what was in 6.28, right? Was there anything else in 2.8 that we haven't talked about? What's the, Hildebrand, yeah, Hildebrand, Hildebrand, Hildebrand stuff Hildebrand. that I haven't done. Yeah, uh, so that was pretty good. That was actually really well done. I really enjoyed that. Um, it was a very funny uh, Hildebrand uh, quest. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, so like yeah. I'm not sure like how the manual wep weapon thing is working. So the first step is just you need 1,500 uncapped uh, in-game tombstones. Okay. That's oh, it. okay. So. This, this is more or less like what it was in uh, Shadowbringers. Yeah. So once you finish the, the Hildebrand quests, the Hildebrand quest for this patch... Um, that opens up with um, Godbert and Gerald, and um, there's a new vendor who will sell you the things you need just for... It's 500 of the tomes uh, 
per item, and you need three for each weapon. So it's really easy. I just just haven't been, I haven't gone in and grinded out fifteen hundred tomes for it, but it's not hard. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, in that case, let's move on to the live letter that was yesterday and uh, gave us the first details on the 6.3 patch, God's Rebel Lands Tremble. Sounds like they're theming it on the um, Alliance Raid, which I think is fairly typical for 6.3 patches now. Um... Where st- is I would have to go back and check, but I feel like that in the 6.3 for both Shadow- for Swarmblood and Shadowbringers specifically was like about the Alliance Raid and the title and the, um, and the key art. Well, Shadowbringers like... had was was point one, wasn't it? That the the your uh... maybe oh maybe it was point one. Time wise, though, it does um... feel like it's time for the new twenty four man, just because we've had I think a couple months of the current raid tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it used to be point so... one actually, like uh, yeah. for all of them. Uh, like the Legend Returns was also point one, um, yeah. and Valsa Virtue Dita Cruelty was point one. Uh, so oh, five point three. Yeah. Five point three was Reflections and Crystal, which was main yeah. story. Oh yeah, that's right. Hmm. And point four was uh, Rune and Gaia, Futures were written. Yeah, oh, yeah. four point three was Under the Moonlight. Yeah, point so. four is ba- yeah, point four is like that. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Um. So anyway, i I'm this just feels like a um like it's going to be referencing the Alliance raid. Yeah, I'm a missile the realm. Because that's the only that's the only place where mm-hmm. like gods it makes a big impact in the in the story. Yeah, at this point yeah. it's like the only place the word gods will even be used. Yeah. So But the main story, uh, we know a little bit about it, not much. But uh, we will continue our journey with Zero. Uh, we yep. will go to Garlemald now, meeting yeah, Alistair and uh, Alfino. Yeah. Um, again, you probably should level Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going to help make things make a lot more sense. Yeah, I'm going to play as um, Reaper for the um, questing uh, parts next story patch. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Um I was at, I was not expecting to go to Garlemald, but I guess it does make sense. Well, um, out of the scions that we've um, split up from, that we haven't met up with yet, it was either the twins or uh, Thancred, right? Yeah. So. And. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I, f- I have a feeling that it'll that it'll involve Reaper stuff and learn a little bit more about what's been going on in Garlemald and things like that. Um, I wonder if we'll go to the Void at all. Probably not. I, Yeah, I think this one's probably not going to be a lot of uh, Void stuff. I think it's just going to be kind of a stand pat story patch till we get to like the real big stuff, I think, later on. Yeah, it, so the only real much... quote... What was that? We spent... Oh. <laughs> We spent pretty much the entire last patch in the voids. So I imagine they're going to balance it out by not yeah. spending much there with that. So, but if we don't go to the void, most likely the trial won't be one of the fiends or the fiends. Yeah. Uh, we have no indication at all of what the trial could be. Uh, we do know the dungeon. It's called Lapis Manalis, which is very Garlay and very Latin. Yeah. Doesn't really tell you anything. That's this um, cool little blue, like, cave. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be a bluish, icy cave type thing, at least to start. Um, I mean, I guess we'll be going there to do something, to get something, but there's just no way to know. I think it's going to be here in addition to being Reaper lore stuff. If you remember in the Reaper storyline quest how Garlemeld, before it became um, Magitech technology, was about surviving in a harsh winter environment, I get the feeling we're also going to hear learn more about that period of Garlemeld history. I think it will also be um, related to the fact that Cicero, after all, is um, the... um, 
avatar of Xenos. So we might learn more about how Xenos made the pact with Zero by going to Kalamol. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That would make sense. Um, I get some other interesting insights into Xenos since, since Zero would, know, would theoretically know stuff that we might be able to convey to us. Yeah. Yoshipi has yeah. been uh, very happy that people like Zero because apparently that was that was like a gamble to them. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, but no people people love Zero, which is good. Zero is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, the trial could be anything. Um, if we don't go to the Void, it probably won't be the Fiends. If we do go to the Void, it probably will be the Fiends. Yeah, it but... seems like they might... Because, like, like, I think we talked about this last um, episode. Like, uh, they might be going for a double fight next. I So, given that we don't seem to be in the Void, my guess is that this one's going to be unrelated to all that. Yeah could in theory even be unrelated to the main scenario. I mean, it's, there's no rule that says it has to be a main scenario fight. It yeah. could be connected to something else somehow. I think that's unlikely, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and then 6.4, I think we're going to fight um, oh, what, whatever, fire and, and uh, <laughs> water. Ruby Conte and uh, yeah. the big turtle. Oh. Yeah, um, fight them together, yeah. and then fight. Um, <sighs> Golbez blanking on names again. Golbez on um, in five point five, and then that'll lead into whatever the actual expansion is. Yeah, which so we'll probably, we'll, we'll, which we will probably have a better idea of then. Um, yeah, pending any wild shifts in what's going on in these MSU patches, which is quite possible. I mean, they can wildly shift what happens in the pace of a in the space of a single patch. So it's happened a few times. <laughs> we just don't have anything else to go on right now. Um. So I guess that means the next is the uh, alliance raid, Miss of the Realm. Yeah, we again we don't really know too much yet. We got to see the first um, screenshot from it though. It has these big golden fields and a large floating tree, very like. Yggdrasil like yeah so it's Aglaia and then now it's Euphrosine which means the third one will probably be Thalia yeah because, um, the three graces in, from Greek uh, myth are Aglaia Euphrosine and Thalia so um, we'll get four more of the of the twelve we could probably make a guess as to which ones but I don't think there's any real way to know for sure. No, not really. And, I mean, we could probably, like, maybe figure out one of them from just the screenshot, because that's what we did with Ralgar last time. The uh, tree makes me think of, um... Memphina? Is that the... Is that the Gridania one? Memphina? Um... No. No, oh, is that... That's not the one, is it? I mean, I think that's the moon one. Oh, no, Fika. That's who I'm thinking of. Oh, Fika. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got plants as her thing, and she, so... If I had to guess... Uh, no, Fika... Um... Maybe Alphic... Let's see, we got... So we had, um... Byragot, Rogger, Azema, and Nodthal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes me think we're probably going to get because those are all kind of those those that set is all kind of together. So maybe Nofika, Alphic, and then who even knows? Yeah. One thing we'll probably have to watch out for is, are we going to get a pair boss? Because if I think we do, that pretty much solidifies that we're going to get a unique end boss in the final raid. Yeah, that's that's the real question. Is like, are we just going to go through all 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 twelve? Um, and then if, if so, who's the final one going to be? 
I feel um, like there has to be a has to be something that's not just the twelve, but I don't know. I mean, so far this raid is surprisingly straightforward. So yeah. So my get. I mean, so my guess is Nofika and Elphic because um, like Byragot and Rogger are both like. Uh, if you look at their symbols, they're paired up by colors. Yeah. Um, like Byragot and Rogger are the purplish color, I guess, lightning. Azema and Noldthal are both red for fireish. Yeah. Uh, Nofika and Alphic are together. Uh, Halone and Minfina, yeah. Thaliak and Nimea, and Limlin and Oshon. So I'm 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 guessing we're going to get two more pairs. I don't know what they'll which ones they'll be though. Yeah. But the plant makes me think uh, Nofika. See. Just because the first one was so straightforward, I'm expecting this one to throw a twist, especially since the whole reason is it's a trial. I wouldn't be shocked if uh, we either get a non-12 boss as the final boss to hint to the final tier and the twist, or something really out of left field. Yeah. I don't know. It just it seems like... I don't know. If they don't have us fight all of the 12, that would just be weird. Oh yeah, like the. Like regardless, we're gonna fight on twelve probably. Like yeah, yeah. See, they could have uh, before we unlock the raid, like a solo fight where we fight one of the twelve. No, don't ever... I think that would really disappoint people though. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna do that. They might combine two of them together into a single fight. I could see them doing that, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I get, I get, I get why you, why you think that. But on the other hand, maybe they might just be we have to fight all, all the twelve, and then that's it. That's that's, that's the raid. Everything doesn't have to be super complicated. Yeah. Uh, and there's the deep dungeon, which is coming in. Uh, yeah. Uh, six six point three we're, five. We're still hanging around in Mordona for all this extra stuff. <laughs> I hope I hope you like Mordona because we're just there all the time right now, because um, we're probably gonna go beneath the Crystal, Crystal Tower. Tower. We're going to Eureka Orthos. We now have yeah. two Eurekas because sure. Not confusing at all. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is yeah, that's seemingly more in line with Final Fantasy III's take on Eureka, which was also beneath Crystal Tower. Yeah. Although, well, so you teleported, but yeah. I. There's the vague possibility that it could be beneath the first Crystal Tower, but I think that's unlikely. I think we'll be doing it from Mordona. Oh, you meant the first, like, on the first. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, pro- probably from Mordona. They're probably going to avoid doing too much stuff on the first until they have major reasons we to bring are- us back there. Although we are going to be doing some stuff on the first. That is true. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it sounds like it's going to be a deep dungeon. Like I, 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 they didn't. They said there'd be some changes, but they also expect that it'd be broadly the same idea. Yeah, you're you're gonna have to clear uh, Palace of the Dead fifty to do it, but you don't have yeah. to play. Don't you don't have to clear Heaven on High um, yeah. to do it. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I wonder if they just don't want to do another t- tutorial thing, so they just make you do Palace of the Dead first. Maybe, because it seems unlikely they will follow up on the story, since the story doesn't end until uh, floor 100. Yeah, I think they just don't want to have to do another tutorial thing for it. Yeah, so that would, just, like, well, would, would be fitting, though, considering Tactics Ogre is a thing right now. But Yeah. Um, so, uh, if there's some unused FF3 stuff that's only from the, the Eureka portion, it'll probably show up in <sighs> in here. There really isn't, like, like they they shoved most of Eureka's FF3 stuff into um, the Crystal Tower raids, and Echidna was shoved into um, Void Arc. Uh, no, yeah. not Void Arc, the other one. No, it's Void Arc. It is Void Arc. It is Void Arc. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do, but yeah, that'll be interesting. We'll fight Amon again. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, they can bring back Amon's uh, other color palette. 
Yeah. See, there we go. I, we have I, something. I, on, honestly, I would not be surprised if we do just end up fighting four-man versions of the Crystal Tower bosses. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, See, it would be funny if we fight Amon again and we knock him off the Crystal Tower. Just cement him as uh, Final Fantasy XIV's Geese Howard. It's so fucking funny how how he's become one of the most fought enemies now. Yeah, it's, it's like no one would have expected that. <laughs> really? Um, uh, let's see. Like, we don't know if we don't know if there's going to be Pomanders or anything, but expect probably. something along those lines. Probably. probably. Um, we like we like the deep dungeons. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. They, but yeah, they said there'd be some changes and some new stuff, but to broadly expect it to be the same idea. Well, they've got all that secondary action stuff, much like in the variant dungeons and on the island, that they could actually play with, with Pomanders or other unique yeah. uh, deep dungeon activity. Yeah, so th- we might see some more stuff like that, or the um, Bajja lost action, something like that could show up. That could be cool. Yeah. Uh, then let's see, we have the crafting tribe being added, the Loporits. Uh, not not particularly surprising. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I think everyone, as soon as they appeared, we saw them, we, everyone was expecting, oh, that's yeah. one of the beast tribes, so. Yeah, uh, I mean. It's interesting to see what we're, like, what we're, what we're building, like, what the whole objective will be, but I, it's the Loporits. I think we can pretty much guess how this is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you like carrots. <laughs> yes. It would be funny if we had to like help fix up their um, not yeah. good enough um, uh, living uh, the, the apartments that they were building. Yeah, that's actually might pretty be, likely. I think might expand on the. Uh, I guess they, they, they're kind of living with humans to some degree now, so probably don't need our help with that yeah. anymore. So. I mean, I've, I wonder if it, if it will not be on the moon, but instead in um, um, Labyrinthos. Yeah, could be. I mean, we already have other stuff on the moon dispatch, so... Yeah. Uh, well, Todd we... Requests. For the crafting, we did have the people that are going up to the moon to work or live there, so it could be something to do with the living quarters and trying to work with them. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Tatra's Grand Endeavor will be going to Kugane. Not surprising. Meaning Hancock our way there. expansions. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Just more chances for Tataru to own Hancock. Yeah, yep. wonder if there might be like something with um, uh, Gilgamesh there as well. Could be. Um, d- did they say if you have to clear four lords for this? Don't think they said anything about it. Uh, that I would not be surprised if that ends up being a requirement, though. Yeah, it definitely that would make sense. definitely feels like we should go back to that because that was a. That is a major Tataru storyline. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Uh, more Hildebrand and Mandeville weapons. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we should find out exactly what the actual grind is going to be like. Yeah. Uh, the next Unreal is going to be Sophia. And we don't know what the next Ultimate is going to be, but probably another raid series. Yeah. Um, th- yeah, they don't usually announce them until the net second life letter, so we have no real way of knowing. Yeah. Um, it could be the Warring Triad. It could be the Four Lords. It could be something else entirely. I think trying to guess this is like... Oh, yeah, tri- trial. They, they, yeah. yeah, there's there's a there's kind of a pattern, but there's also kind of not. And they're not beholden to to stick with any sort of pattern anyway so yeah i'm not gonna put a huge amount of work in trying to game out what it is because it'll be whatever it is yeah the um the best comedy guess i saw was uh, cape west wind because (laughs) it's gone and it needs to come back no it doesn't (laughs) yeah they um i I think there's some people there were some people commenting on that and um during the 
during the live letter, and they were reacting to that. Um, I still think they should do a. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 really hoping for that uh, uh, Gil, uh, Hildebrand series uh, ultimate. You see, that would be really that would be really fun. I mean, like, I mean, you know, we said like you said Cape Westwood, but like they, they could do the 14th Legion. Mm-hmm, they could. Um, with help, going like I said, they help. can do what they can do whatever they want, and there's no real way to guess. Going with the um, Hildebrand stuff, if they did like a Gilgamesh ultimate, you can reference the <laughs> Hildebrand stuff, but you could also do unique new things as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think trying to think too much about it is just not going to accomplish anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's just no. No way of knowing. Um, new Crystal Conflict map, Kugane. They're going to take the um, Sea of Cloud ones out of rotation or reduce it in rotation. Yeah. Um, Look forward to it. Like, Crystal Conflict is a lot of fun. Yeah. The um, that guy from the Kugane Castle dungeon is apparently in it, which is funny. The, I'm uh, the, ho- the hoping the, they resist the temptation the dude, to have the dog. The dude who hired Yojimbo. No, oh, they nice, actually should have nice. the dog. No, no, Yojimbo should be a stage Howard. Stage stage hazard. <laughs> that would be so fun. Uh, this, Yojimbo just drops from the ground and just like does a huge <laughs> AOE, and you if you get caught in it, well, it's tough cookies. Uh, or maybe he shows up and he drags the crystal off in the other direction. That would piss people off. That would be really funny. Um. Uh, there's a PVE and PVE PVP ch- uh, job changes. Um, only thing we know is that uh, Paladin's rotation for PVE is going to change. Yeah. Um, if you're curious about why that is, um, you can go read Paladin discussions places. Basically, just it doesn't burst very well, so it doesn't fit into the meta very nicely right now. Yeah, I saw someone on Twitter talking about Paladin in general yesterday, but uh... yeah. I mean, basically, it's just the rotation's kind of um, janky um, and doesn't line up really well. So it tends to drift around. Yeah. So it doesn't fit in the two-minute uh, burst meta that we have right now. So expect that to change. Um, they said it wouldn't be an enormous change, but it would be a change in the rotation. And that's the only Makes change sense. we know of for certain. Yeah. So it sounds like less less of a buff and more of a quality of life change for Paladin. Yeah, it, I, I would expect it to be doing roughly the same amount of damage once this is over, but just be doing it in a slightly different way. Yeah, because I just noticed from leveling a Paladin and doing it a bit of a, at eighty in that how when to do the magic uh, rotation and when to do the physical rotation just felt awkward. Yeah. Um, you gotta like Paladin is like a different opener for every single boss fight, and it's just really obnoxious. I, uh, when I was leveling Paladin, I could never really figure out what I was doing with the magic, how to fit the magic stuff <laughs> in, but I yeah. didn't think about it too much because I was gonna stop using it as soon as I got it to the cap anyway. So yeah, um, we're going back to the first for some crafting tool augmentation. Yeah, tool enhancement with uh, with with, with uh, long hair. Gerald or Grinold. Um that was unexpected. I don't think anybody saw that coming. No, definitely not. Um and also while we're there, uh that's where our new custom delivery client is. It's um this dude in um in the fairyland who's been turned into a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a whole there's a whole series of side quests about, that involve this dude. Um nobody remembers him, but that's hilarious. Yeah. I didn't realize that that was the custom delivery character. Yeah, that 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 living that that shrub with a mouth in that picture is the custom delivery <laughs> client. Um. So yeah, nobody nobody saw that coming. <laughs> um, adding a diving spot in Upper Lanosha around the Wanderer's Palace. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, like they're doing it for spear fishing. And, um, yeah, them adding, like, diving sections to more areas is, like, for as much as we don't care for spearfishing or diving, it's cool that they're doing it. Yeah. 
Um, it's, it's, it'll be neat to be able to dive around um, the yeah. Wanderer's Palace. That's just a, that's just a neat idea. Um, I don't know if there's very many other places worth adding that in ARR, but... Um, there's not that many places cool. with, like, big water in ARR. Yeah. Like, there's, obviously, there's, um... Uh, let, let us, let us swim out, let us swim out to, um, Midgar Zormer. <laughs> Costa del Sol, but that's Costa not del really... Sol and there's the piers, like... Yeah. That's kind of it. Mm. Does, um... Is there a lake? Is, how big is the lake in Mordona? Oh, God. Big. That's big. That's a good that's, idea. That, that's what I said. That would be an interesting <laughs> that's what I said. place to dive. That's what I said. Let us swim. Let us swim all the way out to uh, Midgar's world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um yeah, Crystal Tear is big. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, duty support uh, for the rest of the Heavensward dungeons being added. Oh yeah. Um, they're making some changes to um the uh, final Heavensward dungeon. Um, a thero-chemical research facility. Yeah. They're um, it's, I think mostly they're, they they said they're just adjusting um, some stuff about how the final boss works. I'm guessing they're removing that cutscene in the middle. Oh yeah, and just gonna making it a, like a, two, a regular two phase fight, because, which is fine. Because in the middle is when they work. merge, right? Yeah, because there's you a know, long cutscene, and then you fight them individually. Yeah, and then there's another cutscene, and then you have Ashy and Prime, and they're probably just gonna remove that middle cutscene and. They could also, they could also they might just shorten it to like something that's like thirty seconds. So just and just make it a regular reach. like in battle cutscene, and then you don't yeah. have to start over as a new poll. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm expecting. Nothing hugely major. I don't think anything about how the rest of the dungeon works would require a lot of changes for duty support because it's a fair it's a fairly standard dungeon. Other than that. Yeah, I'm more interested in seeing who the um, who the companions will be in the patches. Like in the dungeons. In where? In the dungeons. Oh, yeah. The uh, um, I saw someone suggest that for um, anti tower, they should let you. Um, they should have you take along some um, paragos and some brooms. <laughs> you forget. But did like did Fanker come with you to the anti tower? Did we just tell him afterwards that Rufilia? I think gone? we just told him afterwards. I think. I think the twins were there, but they were stuck doing stuff with them. Um, uh, Matoya. Yeah, Matoya. Yeah, and that's uh, also when Kyle. Which they could always, they could always, they could always change that. Yeah. Um, I'm just hope, I, I think hope, we hope Kyle gets to come with into one of them because this is when she joins in the and MSQ as well. Yeah. You know, one other change for that dungeon did occur to me. There is that first boss fight where you fight that uh, Garlean guy. I wonder, it wouldn't be a mechanical change, I wonder if I might adjust it so it has kind of the more modern uh, dialogue style where it shows the face and oh, the neat. lines coming up. Yeah. Because he does talk a lot in that, in that fight. Um, let's see. Uh, new treasure map exclusive to Elpis. I wonder if that means you can only gather it in Elpis and then only use it in Elpis? Yeah. Well, using it in Elpis would make sense if it's gonna be like, because like, yeah. it seems very strange that the, the, the treasure maps would take you back in time. Um, uh, it would just, like that's one of those things you just you don't think about it too much. And but yeah, this, it is interesting that they seem they said it was exclusive to Elpis, so yeah. only Elpis. Um, but they didn't. I don't think they expanded on if that was just meant gathering or if it just meant using or what. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's both. You can only get it there, and you can only use it there. Yeah, it's called the Shifting Gymnasium Agonum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Island Sanctuary. This is your department. Yes. So, uh, Island Sanctuary is being updated. Uh, the Yosuke wanted. Uh, it's going to get a bunch of new um, recipes, some new things you can, uh, you can, you can sow, new animals, you can get tigers and griffins and morbles. Um, they'll be upgrade, updating like the um, UI and the system for um, working with the um, mammoths to make that less of a hassle because it's been kind of confusing and limiting. Um, also some general quality of life stuff, like you'll be able to get you get a message if someone comes to visit you on the island now. 
uh, and uh, people who visit you will be able to hear the music you're playing on your orchestrion. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so like it sounds like they're just like yeah, so it seems like they're just gonna keep like just adding stuff to it. No mention if like the island itself will expand in some way, um, but we'll see. There's still plenty of like spots in the game along on the island that like doesn't really have much of a point to them right now that they could add stuff in. Um, but we'll okay. see. We've got the mound where we could ther- really theoretically go into it more. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, like the the one thing we felt about Island Sanctuary once we were like were done with it. Like once we had gotten all the recipes and uh, all the um, animals. Well, okay, we still don't have all the shiny animals actually, uh, but like and clearing the story and all that was that like this is something we would love to just come back to. Like you know, every 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 few months have have it expand. We, we, we said we wanted the seasons, and that's, it doesn't sound like they're doing seasons, but, like, just the fact that they're gonna keep updating it with each each new content patch is good enough. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Maybe I'll go, I'll actually get around to doing more. I don't know. Um, and then, let's see, UI updates. So, they are adding a damage type display. It's going to show if attacks are physical, magical, or what they're calling unique. Yeah. Which is oh, anything that's not physical or magical. Um, that's about, yeah, that's been a long time complaint that people, it's hard to tell what kind of damage something is, so that'll be really nice. Yeah. Um, it'll be useful. Um, unique is basically just, there's several other kinds of damage, like... Um, there's gravity damage. That's anything that does like percent HP stuff. Yeah. Be that um, enrages will be like that stuff that can't be mitigated. There's a couple other things. Um, so that'll be useful, particularly for people who play Dark Knight and Paladin, <laughs> uh, because they both they have stuff that can only mitigate one or the other. Uh, you'll be able to see party member debuff and buff timers on the party member frame, which will be helpful for oh, wow. healers in particular. Yeah, that seems like something that should have been there for a very long time. Yeah. Um, a new UI theme. Did they show the new UI theme, or did I no, just um, forget like, it? Well, it was kind of unclear if like the new UI theme is how you see the... Uh, portraits for parties, or uh, if I think it's they're separate. separate. Yeah, I think they're separate. I think because right now we got the regular, you got the light one, and you got the classic blue one, and then I think they're adding another one. Yeah, because like show us what it was. The thing is, like the screenshot for the portrait has like this kind of like blackish UI behind it, so maybe it's like a yeah. darker UI. Yeah. Um. um. But yeah, you'll be able to see the uh, portraits of the people in your party when you enter uh, Duty Finder. Um, it'll be a, like a frame in the UI setup that you yeah. can turn on and off. And I get, I'm assuming that like you can clo- like once it pops up, you can manually close it once you're tired of looking at it. And then it'll show back up next time you go in. Um, which is nice. Yeah. All right, that's a neat thing. That, that's a neat thing, Dad. They just, uh, just kind of make me wish that like the game was uh, advanced enough to like where we could have like dynamic portraits, like little cameras that follow each party member, so we, you would see like <laughs> them doing their actions and such. That would be interesting. It would be completely pointless, but like, yeah, we, we would love having it instead of the regular party thing. Actually, we do wonder if you'd be able to like click on the portraits instead of the names, if you want to like do quick targets. Because that could actually be, be useful for for players. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that could actually be very useful. Yeah. Um, and some other quality of life. Uh, some easier to glamour stuff on your retainers and stuff that's in your uh, retainer's inventory, so that's nice. Yeah, um, it's been a real hassle whenever you want to change up your, <laughs> your retainer's look. I'm I'm hoping they continue to work on that so that you can access stuff in your glamour dress or armory chest for, like, retainers or, like, the collectible people and you don't need to have the item on hand. That would be really nice. 
Like, because, like, we don't even remember a lot of the time, like, what items will, like, that, that, we, that, we, that is worth trying to go get from our uh, glamour dresser if we want to put them on our custom delivery people and the like. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you'll be able to filter newly added items at Sundry Splendors vendors. Which... Personally didn't know that was something people wanted, but guessing that it was something people wanted. Yeah. Um, that seems reasonable, I guess. Um, I have not an issue I have currently um, run into, but... Yeah. Uh, let's see, there were some various other little announcements. They're doing their Tactics Ogre screenshot sweepstakes. There's a, there's a, a Shill Arrangement album that will be av- that is available right now. That sounded really good. Yeah. What I heard of it. Uh, new line stickers, which are only available in Japan for some reason, even though we have lines in the West as well. No one uses it, but we do have it. Yep. Uh... There will be a lottery ticket sales for the uh, orchestra concert uh, in December. Uh, you can uh, the, the the lottery the, the lottery is in December uh, on the seventeenth and eighteenth. Um, and they'll they're apparently going to do some kind of big celebration for Rimmerborn's tenth anniversary. Next year, but they didn't Not say what that yeah, was. No. Yeah. yeah, they kind of ignored so, the original game's tenth anniversary. Yeah. So, which is understandable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, I get it from both directions, and I'm like, yeah, but yeah, I'd expect just that the rising next year to be particularly extravagant. Yeah, and probably some more out of game stuff going on. Bring back the Shantoto event. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, maybe do like a short event or instance where they duplicate like what the players were doing at the end of uh, 1.x, like the Wall of Grabu here. Have, have something that references <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, that, that could be, be cool. Fun, yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see. There'll probably be a lot of that stuff at uh, the fan fests, which is starting next year. Yeah, so I'm just yeah expecting some more this stuff, just more extravagant stuff for Rising. Mm-hmm. And um, the other big thing they're going to be adding in is more housing. Oh, oh shit. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're adding um, six new wards to each um, housing district for a total of eighteen hundred new houses per server. Yeah, which wow. I mean. Given how the distribution is, that's that's a lot for some servers and not nearly enough for others. So, not much they can do about that at this point because I don't think they can actually like do it differently per server. I bet I have a feeling that it just it doesn't work. Better. Yeah. Um, but that's nice for people who don't have a have a house and want one. It'll help a little bit. Provided the way to get them works this time. Yeah. I mean, apparently the lottery has been working fine since they fixed it after the first. Yeah. Year. So apparently it's been apparently it's been going fine. Um, so. All right. Anything else we want to add? Well, that was basically it for the live letter. Um. Now there was there has been um, like uh, stuff relating to. Um, uh, Final Fantasy 16. That's uh, it been, it's been, the game has basically been going into full promotion now in the last couple of months. Uh, yeah, and of course, Yoshi P and a lot of the Heaven's Word people are on that game, uh, and they have a new got a new trailer out. This they're gonna announce the exact release date before the end of the year, uh, and it'll, it'll be summer next year that it comes out. Uh, yeah. And it seems very much like people who liked Heaven's Words more broody Western fantasy style. Well, well, when you were in Ishgard, 
Um, yeah. We'll probably get something out of that. It's very much in that vein. Very, like, downbeat and depressing, intentionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... I, wouldn't... I, I... I wonder if we're going to get maybe a crossover event uh, just at some point. Also with, uh, I wonder if they may do some small crossover stuff with like the seven remakes coming out soon as well. I expected them to do that when the first, like when the first seven remake came out, but they didn't. Yeah. Um, like, but then obviously they did do it for uh, 15. It was a bit late, but they did do it for 15. They did it for lightning returns. Um, what are maybe? I wonder if because it's multiple t- multiple parts, and they don't want to, they don't, not plan to do it for like multiple each one. They're just maybe they're waiting for like the last part to do something big with. Maybe, yeah. It could also be that they really want to just save anything to do with Sephiroth and Genova for when they want to do it in the game itself. Maybe, but we were thinking like you still can't get the Buster Sword in game. We've been using it as a limit break since 2.0. Yeah, but like, like, and you can get you can get clouds like Advent Children outfit, but not his regular soldier outfit. Like, it's a, considering how many other cosplays we have from Final Fantasy at this point, it's kind of strange that we can't do that one. Or I wonder if they're just waiting for the like the, like. like a good time to do it. They just haven't found a place where they wanted. Maybe I like got where they have an iffy spot, and they just want to. They want to fill in there. Yeah, I mean, they've been very uh, they, busy. Like, if they know, want, and yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to figure at some point we're gonna get like Cloud Soldier, Eris outfit, and uh, Tifa's outfit. Yeah, probably. I wonder if it, maybe it's that, that thing where uh, it might be a kind of what. what... Uh, they said about about placement where it's like it's the big crossover for them to do so they might just want to be kind of if they do it they want to make it special or have that have the time for it yeah i mean they might just be waiting until the third one comes out to do it because they just want to do a do it all at once yeah yeah that's that's also what i said a little while ago yeah so so well we'll see um that's all in the future. We'll have plenty of time to talk about that. More. Yeah. Did anything else happen in the last like two months that it w- that might not have been from the live letter, like interviews, st- conversation from interviews, or any other player issues that came up? I feel like I thought there was something, but maybe I'm maybe mm, maybe I'm nothing really. Further. It's been kind of it's been a kind of slow news period for the game. Yeah, which is going on right now. Kind of checking. Not much drama. Yeah, not a huge amount of drama since the other stuff we talked about. Um, like they're working on like they, some of the stuff, quality of life stuff is like things that third party tools were used for. So they're working on trying to get some of that rolled out to reduce third party tool usage. Okay, yeah, I think I saw, I think I saw something about that. That's probably what yeah. I was thinking of. Um, but yeah, there's just nothing, nothing major has happened. No huge drama. Yeah, there was the uh, data center expansion that happened. Uh, yeah, um, that has not, like, I haven't heard anything about that one way or the other, so it seems to just be going normally. Yeah, like, that's the only real thing, like, because, like, the rest has been focusing on, like, a bunch of other Square Enix things. (laughs) Because they've had so many releases in the last two months. Um, you know, they've had the the new, the new uh, Valkyria game, they've had the Harvestella, they had the Iphil Chronicles... Uh, Star Ocean. Star, yeah, Star Ocean. They're shutting down their Final Fantasy VII Battle Royale game. They have DLC for their Dark Souls game. Yeah. So yeah, like so. this has kind of been low on the fourteen front. Uh, which you know, it's fine. We're in that in that middle spot between patch, I think we actually mentioned it, but like patch six point three will be coming out in January, early yes, January. Yes. So what I'm I'm guessing the first Tuesday in January, which will be the a, third. Uh, the third. That's what I'm. Yeah, guessing. third and tenth at the latest. I think it's actually going probably better chance of being the tenth because 
I don't think it would be wise for them to release a big patch during New Year's in Japan. Yeah, but I mean, it's uh, New Year's is sun is like um, is Sunday, so I think the the third might be workable for them. We'll just have to see. Yeah, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll know a month from now, basically. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So with that, I think we are closing out for the month. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter at uh, well uh, at Words of Asm. for now. Uh, hmm. For now. For now. <laughs> oh yes, yes, that's true. Who knows where Twitter is going? Uh, but yeah, you can, fi- you can find uh, Clear Italian at Clear Italian. You can find uh, Azaria Limoli at Azaria Limoli. You can find Midori Toka at Satoshi Miwa. And you can find me at uh, Phil Ultima. And until next month, stand tall, our friends. Our journey never ends. All right, see ya. Have a good one. <laughs>